Hello everyone, welcome to Future News Daily, where I bring you the latest advancements in technology, longevity, science, medicine, and AI. Today is Wednesday, December 28th, 2022. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bells. And with that being said, well, let's get started. First up today, a student-made solar-powered car sets a new world record by traveling 620 miles. The vehicle also broke the solar-powered vehicle speed record at 62 miles per hour. So, called the SunSwift 7, a solar-powered car developed by students at the University of New South Wales in Australia, has set a new world record by traveling 620 miles, or 1,000 kilometers, on a single charge, according to a press release. This achievement, which took place on a test track in South Australia, represents the long distance ever traveled by an electric vehicle on a single charge and surpassed Lucid Air Dream Edition, which has an impressive range of 520 miles, or 837 kilometers. The SunSwift 7, the seventh generation of the SunSwift solar car, is powered entirely by solar energy, with no need for fossil fuels. It is equipped with over 6 square meters of photovoltaic cells, which convert sunlight into electricity to power the car's electric motor. The car also has a small battery pack, which stores excess energy for use when the sun is not shining. The team behind the SunSwift 7 spent four years developing and refining the vehicle to create a practical and efficient EV that could serve as a viable alternative to fossil fuel powered vehicles. In addition to setting the world record for the longest distance traveled on a single charge, the SunSwift EV also holds the record for the fastest solar-powered car, again reaching a top speed of over 62 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour. And here's a picture of it down here. It looks pretty futuristic. All the wheels are covered up and everything. The achievement of the SunSwift 7 team is particularly significant given the increasing global focus on reducing reliance on fossil fuels and finding more sustainable alternatives for transportation. Electric vehicles emitting no tailpipe emissions are a crucial part of the solution to this problem. However, one of the significant challenges facing the widespread adoption of EVs is their limited range, which has traditionally been a barrier to their use for long-distance travel. The SunSwift 7's record-breaking feat demonstrates the potential for EVs to be a viable option for long-distance travel and could help accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles worldwide. In addition to its practical applications, the SunSwift 7 also serves as a testament to the innovative spirit and determination of the University of New South Wales students, who have worked tirelessly to develop and improve this cutting-edge technology. The world record, according to team principal professor of practice Richard Hopkins, quote, shows what is conceivable and what can be achieved, even though SunSwift 7 is far heavier than road legal vehicles, which are required to include a number of equipment like airbags and air conditioning systems. During this record, the energy consumption was just 3.8 kilowatt per 100 kilometers, whereas even the most efficient EVs on the road today only achieve a rating of 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So you're talking about more than four times the energy use, and the average is around 20 kilowatt hours, actually. So SunSwift 7 isn't a production car of the future since we've compromised on comfort and the cost is prohibitive. But we have shown that if you want to make cars more efficient, more sustainable, more environmentally friendly, then it is possible. The success of the SunSwift 7 is also a testament to the potential of renewable energy sources, such as solar power, to play a major role in the global transition away from fossil fuels. As more and more people become aware of renewable energy's environmental and economic benefits, we will likely see an increased focus on developing and deploying technologies that can harness these sources of power. In conclusion, the SunSwift 7's record-breaking distance traveled on a single charge is a major milestone in developing electric vehicles and renewable energy. It demonstrates the potential of EVs to be a viable option for long-distance travel. As the global focus on reducing reliance on fossil fuels continues to grow, we will likely see more breakthroughs like this in the future as researchers and engineers work to develop and deploy cleaner, more sustainable technologies. All right, moving on. Welcome to the first ever McDonald's where you're served by robots in Texas. The article starts off, McDonald's has begun testing its first ever robot restaurant in Texas, sparking debate and intrigue in equal measure. 
In Fort Worth, Texas, the branch is fully automated and requires no human contact to order and pick up your favorite meal. The introvert's dream gained viral attention online after TikTok and Instagram user Foodie Munster shared a video from inside. With 1.2 million views, the video shows how customers can use automated screens to order fast food and collect it via a machine. McDonald's explained in a statement that the restaurant includes new features including the order ahead lane where customers can receive their order on a conveyor belt. The restaurant is the latest move in McDonald's accelerating the Arches growth strategy, which is working on innovation to improve customer experiences. Quote, when you step inside the test restaurant concept, you'll notice it's considerably smaller than a traditional McDonald's restaurant in the U.S. Why? The features, inside and outside, are geared toward customers who are planning to dine at home or on the go. Inside the restaurant, there's a delivery pickup room for couriers to retrieve orders quickly and conveniently. There are also kiosks where customers can place their orders to go and pick up shelf orders. Outside the restaurant, there are several parking spaces dedicated to curbside or order pickup as well as designated parking spaces for delivery drivers. So much more tailored to the, you know, gig economy delivering, but not really more dining in. The introduction of the new technology has divided people online who are unsure about the ethical impact of the change. Well, there goes millions of jobs, said one commenter while another added. Honestly, if they go through with this, I'll just boycott McDonald's. Their food is meh. Wow, that is a really extreme response. Um, put so many people out of work. Guys, these are terrible jobs. Like, I can't believe people are angry that these types of jobs are getting off the market. I mean, first of all, there's a huge job glut in the first place. Anyone who wants a job can get a job, and you don't have to go to, you know, to a McDonald's level to get a job. No one wants these jobs. No one, like, why? Why are you angry about losing a terrible cashier job at McDonald's? Be happy that no one has to do that anymore. <laughs> like, I don't understand. It's the same people that get angry at AI art. Like, that's going to suddenly make human art industry just go out of business. Foodie Monster told Newsweek, quote, The automation works like a factory, so not like you would see in the movies, etc. I believe McDonald's has done well designing this test concept. As someone who grew up visiting and loving McDonald's, I prefer the prior designs. I'm a huge McDonald's fan. I love the food and the experience. I love the ambience and the people serving us. I hate to see McDonald's lose that. Another TikToker asked, who are all the Karens supposed to scream at now? Oh, my gosh. But the others were excited about the concept of the all-new technology. One Twitter user said, quote, I have a feeling the burgers and service will be way better. While the other said, the future is here after getting a glimpse of the newly opened McDonald's. The technology in this restaurant not only allows us to serve our customers in new, innovative ways, it gives our restaurant team the ability to concentrate more on order speed and accuracy, which makes the experience more enjoyable for everyone. I am immensely proud to have this new restaurant concept serving our customers in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. So currently the unique concept can only be found at this location where it's being tested, but the McDonald's team says that their test and learn concept for the store means they hope to benefit restaurant teams and customers around the world in the future. So this is, of course, testing ground, get the kinks out, get their, their margins and percentages and everything good, and then, you know, franchise that out, of course. I believe this test concept could mean a monumental change for the fast food industry. I am blown away by the viral reaction. I'm so grateful for this reaction, said Foodie Muster. Yeah, very um, emotional responses in both directions, which, you know, change is going to do that. So, you know, we'll see what becomes of this. I'm sure we're going to see more and more of it. There's no way we're not going to, you know. I'm, I'm kind of just taking the objective stance. I'm not trying to get opinionated. So, anyway, moving on. Britain's first flying taxi plans lift off for 2023 as it hovers onto secondary testing stage. Two puns in one title. That is, that's a lot. All right. Britain's first flying taxi will finally take to the skies next year as it moves to the next stage of its testing. So the VX4, which will eventually carry four passengers and one pilot, was unveiled at Fanborough Air Show over the summer. A prototype model has already carried out a series of tethered hovers flying less than five feet while still attached to the land. This next stage will see the electric aircraft made by Vertical begin a series of untethered tests at heights up to 50 feet and speeds of 25 miles per hour. Here's an image of the tethered VX4, um, which will eventually carry four passengers and one pilot. So it's a five-seater. Looks very military-esque. Later in the year, the aim is to move the higher and faster flight at altitudes of between 5,000 and 10,000 feet and at speeds of up to 90 miles per hour. So this is again later in the year. So the prototype was mainly built at GKN site in Bristol 
and completed at Vertical's test facility in the Cotswolds. The aim is to have the VX4 certified in 2025 when full-scale production is expected to begin. Bristol-based Vertical listed on the New York Stock Exchange last December with a valuation of £1.8 billion, but it has since fallen sharply amid a big downturn for tech stocks. Of course, that's across the board. You know, it's not on them. The company is one of a number racing to lead a market that could transform mass transportation. The electrically powered vehicles are seen as a cheaper, quieter, and emissions-free alternative to helicopters. The noise pollution would be a huge, huge change if they could manage that. Yeah, that's that. And the last one for today, kind of a quick video. Construction begins on NASA's next-generation asteroid Hunter. Now, this one's interesting. A space telescope designed to search for the hardest to find asteroids and comets that stray into Earth's orbital neighborhood, NASA's Near Earth Object Surveyor, or NEO Surveyor, recently passed a rigorous technical and programmatic review. Now the mission is transitioning into the final design and fabrication phase and establishing its technical, cost, and schedule baseline. The mission supports the objectives of NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office and NASA headquarters in Washington. The NASA Authorization Act of 2005 directed NASA to discover and characterize at least 90% of the near-Earth objects more than 140 meters or 460 feet across that come within 30 million miles of our planet's orbit. Objects of this size are capable of causing significant regional damage or worse should they impact the Earth. Quote, NEO Surveyor represents the next generation of NASA's ability to quickly detect, track, and characterize potentially hazardous near-Earth objects said Lindsay Johnson, NASA's Planetary Defense Officer at PDDO. Quote continues, Ground-based telescopes remain essential for us to continually watch the skies, but a space-based infrared observatory is the ultimate high ground that will enable NASA's planetary defense strategy. So managed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, NEO's surveyor will journey a million miles to a region of gravitational stability called the L1 Lagrange point between the Earth and the Sun, where the spacecraft will orbit during its five-year primary mission. From this location, the NEO surveyor will view the solar system in infrared wavelengths, light that is invisible to the human eye, because those wavelengths are mostly blocked by Earth's atmosphere. Larger ground-based observatories may miss near-Earth objects that the space telescope will be able to spot by using its modest light-collecting aperture of nearly 20 inches. NEO Surveyor's cutting-edge detectors are designed to observe two heat-sensitive infrared bands that were chosen specifically so the spacecraft can track the most challenging to find near-Earth objects, such as dark asteroids and comets that don't reflect much light. In the infrared wavelengths to which NEO Surveyor is sensitive, these objects glow because they are heated by sunlight. In addition, NEO Surveyor will be able to find asteroids that approach Earth from the direction of the Sun, as well as those that lead and trail our planet's orbit where they are typically obscured by the glare of sunlight, objects known as Earth Trojans. Quote, for the first time in our planet's history, Earth's inhabitants are developing methods to protect Earth by deflecting hazardous asteroids, said Amy Manger, the mission's survey director at the University of Arizona in Tuscany. Quote continues, but before we can deflect them, we first need to find them. Neo Surveyor will be game changer in that effort. The mission will also help to characterize the composition, shape, rotation, and orbit of near-Earth objects. While the mission's primary focus is on planetary defense, this information can be used to better understand the origins and evolution of asteroids and comets which formed the ancient building blocks of our solar system. When it launches, NEO Surveyor will build upon the success of its predecessor, the Near Earth Object Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, or NEO WISE. Repurposed from the WISE Space Telescope after that mission ended in 2011, NEO WISE proved highly effective at detecting and characterizing near Earth objects. But NEO Surveyor is the first space mission built specifically to find large numbers of these hazardous asteroids and comets. And this is very, very much needed, especially after yesterday's video. If you saw that, the one we just recently found, we didn't find it until entered into our orbit. There's a lot of them we, we miss, the ones that are very, very small, but still could do some kind of damage. I mean, the one yesterday actually said it would have, it would have just burned up in the atmosphere, but there are some that we, you know, would miss that would not as well, so... Very much needed technological innovations here, so very good. Um, that is the last article I have for you today, so don't forget this video is for educational purposes only. I will never recommend any investments, solicit your time or money, attempt to contact you on any other platform, or own any rights to the information within this content. With that being said, thanks for tuning in, and happy holidays again.